Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. This is Express. So now just before the break, uh, we spoke about how to integrate yourself and fit into the workplace if you are new to that environment. Mm -hmm. But as much as we believe what you put in is what you get out, it's also very important that you feel encouraged to thrive in a healthy working environment. It's so, so important. You can't underestimate how important it is. That's why this morning we're asking, does your workplace encourage a healthy and positive work environment. Mm. This morning we're joined by a relationship expert and she's also a TED speaker, Paula Quincy, to help us uh, discuss this hot topic. Also, we'd love to hear your questions, your comments as well. So do go over to our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Drop a comment on this post. We'll engage with you live. Paula, so good to see you. <laughs> Why is it so important to maintain a healthy working relationship in um, corporate culture? Well, you know what, we spend most of our time, on average, eight plus hours in the workplace mm. working with people every day. You mm. know, some would say we spend more time with our work colleagues than our actual partners. Mm. You know, um, so it's important. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they don't like that all the time. They don't like that always, but yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, if you're going to be spending so much time with uh, people, why not do it in, a, in an environment that is positive and healthy and, and that talks to productivity and being the best, not only as an individual, but collectively as a team as well. Mm. When you hear of the word uh, healthy workplace, the word culture yes. creeps in. Yes. It's all about culture yes. and the type of culture that the uh, organization sort of creates or fosters. How do you go about creating a culture within a work environment? Yeah. You know, and it starts at the top as mm. because leaders set the tone for the rest of the organization. Mm. So just like in the home, parents set the tone for children and children follow parents as their role models. Mm. It's the same in the workplace. Yeah. And so it, it needs to be an environment that creates a space where it's okay to be yourself. Mm. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, it's okay to have conflict. And when I say conflict, I don't mean screaming matches. It can be as simple as um, difference of opinions and ideas. It's mm. commonly called diversity in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. I think most important is making sure that every voice is heard. Mm. Every single employee in the workplace, irrespective of, of position, mm. contributes in one way or the other. Mm. And so how do we acknowledge every single person's contribution and role and value that they are adding to the business at the end of the day? Mm. Mm. Now, how would do you um, differentiate the difference between a healthy uh, versus a toxic, negative work, work culture, especially if we are addressing issues and someone would come at you saying, don't question me, but communication forms part of being healthy. Yeah. So let's talk about unhealthy first, or what we call toxic corporate culture or toxic environment. That mm. kind of environment is where it's kind of almost Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening comes and you're dreading Monday because you don't <laughs> want to go to work. Mm. Yeah. When you get that feeling, you know there's a problem, mm. okay? And it's not to say that every day we jump out of bed ready to go to work, yeah. but you should want to go to work because you enjoy what you do, you enjoy your position, the industry that you're in, the people that you're working with. Mm. So when it's toxic, um, you dread going to work, mm. um, you're constantly on edge, you're stressed, you're anxious, um, you, d you the, the engagement with people is just constantly sort of covering my back and, yeah, yeah. and making sure that, you know, um, I'm not going to get into any sort of yeah. predicament or trouble or anything like that. Healthy is obviously opposite to that. Mm. People will go to a place where they feel welcomed, mm. but people will stay in a place where they feel valued. Mm. And I'm not just talking about money here, you know, people often think, oh, we'll pay people money and they'll be happy and they'll stay. That's not no. true. Mm. It's about trust, respect, uh, communication, honesty, teamwork, sharing a vision, like the booker. That's an, a typical example of yeah. fantastic teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. Sharing a vision, yeah. respect, trust, knowing each other, you've got each other's backs. Yeah. You know, that's what a healthy relationship looks like. Ah, our conversation with Paula Quincy continues here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is a Monday, we're talking relationships, but we're looking specifically at how a healthy corporate culture or company culture can make us all do the best we can and bring our A-game every single time. Connect with us on our social media. We want to hear from you, your opinions, your questions for Paula. Our Facebook page is Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. We'll be back. It's my Feel Good Breakfast show. Well,
welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express live on us, ABC3. Well, it's Monday. We're talking relationships, and today, relationship expert Paula Quincy is in the hot seat to help, uh, help us discuss how to cultivate a healthy yeah. office culture and a strong team as a result. We'd love to hear your questions and your comments. So go on our Facebook page, Express on Morning Show SABC3. In fact, you have gone on our Facebook page. You have left us a comment. What are they saying? Yes, so here we have Shireen Abrahams who says, Good morning, my Express family happy monday loving the vibe and studio always so inspiring a team that works together wins together look at what the springboks have done mm. they have made us world champions have a great day lots of love my feel good breakfast family thank you so much <laughs> Thanks, i mean it is so true that yeah. hashtag stronger together i feel like is applicable across any sort of area of life and any yeah. sort of mm. type of workspace you might have to be dealing with but when it comes to the workplace, what are some of the tools and skills required to be able to create a work culture that is uh, inclusive? Mm. So definitely, I think one of inclusivity and diversity, as I said earlier, every voice counts. Mm. Every person is important and contributes. Mm. Some of the tools that you could use, so things like um, corporate values or company values, mm. what do they stand for? And not just as pretty things on the wall, yeah. but from a behavior point of view. Mm. How does everybody live those values every day? Mm. Communication is key. You need to be able to communicate the good, mm. the bad, and the ugly. You know, mm. sometimes in the workplace, like in our personal relationships, we don't get along. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or somebody says or does something or doesn't do something and it frustrates us and irritates us and yeah. that can cause conflict. Mm -hmm. So to create a space as, that's safe enough to be able to have what I call those courageous conversations. Mm -hmm. Courageous conversations. Courageous conversations. Mm -hmm. And then the environment that allows um, people to have a, not what people call work-life balance. I like mm -hmm. to call it work-life integration. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that talks to people's different needs because everybody is different. Yeah. And creating that space also where people feel valued. Mm. and that you're all working towards one vision and one uh, sort of ultimate goal at mm. the end of the day because th that makes that builds the teamwork mm. yeah I mean you know being in an office space spending a lot of time with the same people can also result in some instances conflict yeah how would you then suggest that people within office spaces can deal with conflict yeah. mm. I, so, so using the courageous conversations, um, it's, it's actually a formula that we use in the corporate space, but it's really about listening skills. Mm. And often we listen to respond, yeah. we don't listen to hear. So when we're having those conversations, first of all, to it's difficult in the workplace, but how do you take the emotion out of the situation? Yeah. How do you look at the facts and what's really going on and then bring the emotion back to deal with it in a human way? Because mm. at the end of the day, we're all humans, yeah. okay? Understanding that you may have a different view, a different perspective to mine, and that's okay. But then how do we find a middle ground? How do we find a way to work together going forward? Yeah. And this is where in the workplace, things like emotional intelligence is key and developing self and personal mastery are some of the things that corporates bring in to help people develop themselves mm. to be able to handle people dynamics and team dynamics in the workplace. Mm. People dynamics and, and, and team dynamics, I mean, that's the most important thing, I suppose, when you are working in a team. Yeah. And every team thrives off relationships. Yeah. How do you build those relationships? So I call them having smart relationships, okay? Um, so the S stands for um, in terms of how am I, um, you know, from a, so how am I showing up in terms mm. of being solution orientated? Because mm. for every problem, there is a solution, sometimes mm -hmm. more than one. Mm. So first of all, how are you going in in terms of your agenda and your mindset? Mm. Go in with a solution orientated approach. Yeah. The M stands for mindfulness in terms of how am I showing up mm -hmm. and how am I co-creating the situation? Because okay. situations don't just happen. They so are you showing it. up in a positive frame of mind or a negative frame of mind? Yeah. And are you showing up in a positive or a negative emotional state? Mm. Okay, then the A stands for accountability. How am I holding myself accountable to do the right thing, say the right thing, behave in the right way, mm. but also how am I holding others accountable? Mm. Okay, in other words, how can you call out your teammates when they are not towing the line or mm. when they're not al aligning to the values and whatever needs to be done in terms of deliverables and all of that? Mm. The R stands for respect. 
first of all, self-respect in terms mm. of your own boundaries and that, but then respect for others mm. and respect for the team and the, and the organisation as a whole. Mm. And then lastly, T for time. <gasps> Making time for your relationships, as mm. Kay said earlier. Mm. And if you don't make time for your relationships over time, you're not going to have relationships. Oof. So those little things, the coffee chats, yeah. the impromptu social lunches or mm. after work drinks, that kind of thing. Remembering special things. Yeah. How's your children doing? How yeah. was your weekend? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Listening to event here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, giving any ear. We got another comment here um, that came through um, from one of the viewers because they're sending them through to us on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show SABC3. Um, uh, that comment, I'm going to try and find it. I haven't got it just yet, but hopefully before you go, we'll ask you that question uh, for the person who sent the question. The question uh, is actually here. You yes, got the question we have there. it. It's from Logan, and um, they they're asking, when you walk into the workplace for the first mm. time, how should you approach a person in the workplace if you have no self-confidence? Mm. Yeah. So people often say, uh, fake it till you make it, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I like to say, faith it till you make it. Faith <laughs> it till okay. you make it, yeah? It's, and you know, I think the first thing is acknowledging, okay, I'm scared, um, I'm insecure, I'm not too sure of where I, you know, who I am and where I fit in and those mm. kind of things. But the easiest way to break the ice, so to speak, is to share a little bit about yourself and show vulnerability. Vulnerability mm. shows that we're human. Mm. It shows that, you know, and it makes it easier for people to connect with us on that level. Mm. So sharing a little bit about yourself, where you've come from, a little bit of your family, uh, life aspirations, yeah. things, or even asking for help. Yeah. A lot of people think asking for help makes us weak. Mm. It doesn't. Because at some point, we don't have all the answers. Doesn't matter what level you are in the business. Mm. Asking for help as well. Mm. Thank you so much, Paula, for joining us. That was very insightful for us. We're talking all things relationships yes. this morning. So, yeah, Jamie. <laughs>